the longer the Boeing Starliner stays in space, the less likely it is to return. This is understandable for a vehicle that is inherently riddled with potential problems like the Starliner. In addition to helium leaks and thruster failures, NASA recently discovered another problem with the vehicle related to flight software. This new issue contributes to a nightmare for the agency, affecting not only the Starliner's ability to return and the safety of astronauts, but also derailing NASA's rigorous internal schedule. Find out everything in today's TechMap episode. But before we begin, let's subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the latest space news. On June 1st, SpaceX announced Starship Flight 4 would be delayed from June 5th to 6th for unknown reasons. It's a coincidence that Boeing Starliner's crew flight test would launch on June 5th. This raises a big question about the connection between the two events. Is Starship delayed because of the Starliner launch? More than two months later, when Starliner is about to end its mission, another delay on SpaceX's vehicle likely happens. The unfortunate vehicle this time is the Dragon spacecraft that is going to be part of the Crew-9 mission. Some sources said that NASA is planning to significantly slip Crew-9 from August 18th to September 24th due to the ongoing issues on the stranded Starliner. As of August 6th, the Boeing Starliner has been in space for over two months. Meanwhile, NASA management has still been in deep discussion about whether to call for an alternative craft, SpaceX Dragon to rescue the crew, or let the misfiring Starliner capsule do it as usual. Boeing's spacecraft showed a lack of reliability before launch, as a small helium leak was detected in the spacecraft's service module. Helium is used in spacecraft thruster systems to allow the thrusters to fire and is not combustible or toxic. Worse, on the way to ISS, multiple of the spacecraft's thrusters failed and then delayed its docking time. These smaller thrusters are used as the spacecraft moves closer to the space station, so it can make more finely tuned changes to its trajectory. The spacecraft eventually docked successfully with the space station, but to ensure a safe return, engineers had to address ongoing issues aboard the Starliner. After conducting a series of tests and analyses, including two docked hot fire tests and one ground test, the team may have found the root cause of the helium leak. However, they have not identified yet a root cause for why multiple of the spacecraft's thrusters failed during docking. Recently, a much more terrible thing has been found. Current flight software on board Starliner cannot perform an automated undocking from the space station and entry into Earth's atmosphere. This would seriously affect Starliner's ability to return, which is what the agency is most concerned about. The solution here is to update flight software, a process that is deemed to be significant and non-trivial. They could take up to four weeks to do that, and then the following mission, Crew-9, will be delayed. As a result, NASA's internal schedule will be messed up. The ISS has two docking ports for crew vehicles on the U.S. side, which must be shared between Crew Dragon and Starliner. One port is occupied by the Crew-8 mission aboard Crew Dragon, which is expected to return to Earth in the coming month, and the other port is occupied by Boeing's Starliner. Of course, NASA cannot afford to brick one of its two crew docking ports, as it would limit the agency's ability to rotate astronauts and resupply the ISS. At this point, concerns about astronaut safety are greater than ever, as Starliner's problems continue to worsen. As usual, a safe and feasible solution is the use of SpaceX's Crew Dragon spacecraft to return its astronauts. However, there are mixed opinions inside NASA management, and as a result, there was no consensus among those responsible for making decisions given the variety of factors involved. If return astronauts Butch Wilmore and Sunita Williams on the Starliner, NASA is taking on an unquantifiable amount of risk, especially if a major failure occurs during the return which could jeopardize the astronaut's safety and lead to severe repercussions for Boeing's contract with NASA. Although many have expressed doubts about the safety of Starliner, the agency would be unlikely to accept the option of bringing Starliner back empty. It's a vote of no confidence in Boeing that may lead the company to cut its losses and withdraw from the program. If NASA decides to utilize SpaceX's Crew Dragon for the return of astronauts instead of Boeing's Starliner, it may face backlash for perceived overreaction. This situation arises from the agency's prior public statements, indicating that the risks associated with the Starliner were manageable. So between the three options above, which one do you think is the most feasible? Share your thoughts in the comments section below.
Additionally, Boeing has been lobbying to bring Starliner home with the crew. Despite not having identified a root cause for the issues on the thruster, Boeing has been advocating for NASA to accept flight rationale as a substitute for a complete understanding of the failures. The flight rationale in this case means a description of the reasons why a particular space mission is considered acceptably safe to carry out. Boeing remains confident in the Starliner spacecraft and its ability to return safely with crew, the company stated. We continue to support NASA's requests for additional testing, data, analysis, and reviews to affirm the spacecraft's safe undocking and landing capabilities. Our confidence is based on this abundance of valuable testing from Boeing and NASA. Clearly, NASA made a big mistake from the start by choosing Boeing and giving the company special treatment under the commercial crew program. As you know, for 14 years, NASA has awarded over $11 billion in contracts to commercial crew development initiatives over five funding rounds. The lion's share of those dollars is awarded to Boeing's Starliner and SpaceX's Crew Dragon at $5.1 and $5.5 billion in total respectively. SpaceX funding includes 14 crew flights to the ISS, and Boeing includes six missions. On top of that, Boeing is the only company to be awarded funding from all five CCP funding rounds thanks to its long history back to the dawn of U.S. human spaceflight. Although got the biggest funding, Boeing Starliner stumbled out of the gate, while SpaceX Dragon with less funding is soaring ahead. More notably, at present, the troubled spacecraft has even pushed NASA into a dilemma as the agency has struggled to balance all the risks from the Starliner's glitches. While the Boeing Starliner was stuck in space, another glitch occurred with Northrop Grumman's spacecraft, likely contributing to the problem. On August 4, SpaceX Falcon 9 launched a Northrop Grumman Cygnus cargo spacecraft to the International Space Station, but the spacecraft suffered problems that have delayed maneuvers needed to reach the station. More notably, among the 3,857 kilograms of cargo that the Cygnus is carrying, there are 1,021 kilograms of crew supplies, including some items for astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams. The astronauts' clothes were taken off Starliner just before launch to make room for spare parts for the station's urine processor assembly. What is not on Cygnus, though, are Crew Dragon pressure suits for Williams and Wilmore, amid the context that NASA is considering having the two astronauts return home on Crew Dragon rather than Starliner. According to Bill Spetch, NASA ISS Operations Integration Manager, they would have to deal with that later. The launch of Cygnus aboard Falcon 9 appeared to go as planned, with the Cygnus spacecraft separating from the Falcon's upper stage in low Earth orbit nearly 15 minutes after liftoff. There were no updates from NASA or Northrop Grumman after the spacecraft separation for several hours. However, communications between ISS astronauts and mission control indicated that the spacecraft had not performed initial burns to raise its orbit to enable an arrival at the station early August 6. In a NASA statement issued nearly six hours after liftoff, the agency said that the spacecraft failed to perform a maneuver called Targeted Altitude Burn, or TB-1, 42 minutes after liftoff, due to a late entry to burn to sequence. The burn was rescheduled for 50 minutes later, but also did not take place because of a slightly low initial pressure state in the engine. Cygnus is at a safe altitude, and Northrop Grumman engineers are working on a new burn and trajectory plan, NASA stated, adding that the plan should still allow Cygnus to arrive for a capture by the station's robotic arm at 3.10 a.m. Eastern August 6. NASA added that solar array deployment was completed about three hours after liftoff, as expected. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.